Hi, I'm Sam from Manor Performance. Welcome to my latest video where I'm going to run through the basic functionality and configuration software of the EC Master ADU. This is the EC Master ADU 5. It's a fully configurable dashboard uh, for cars, bikes, or boats. It has CAM bus functionality, so it can receive data from standard ECUs on OBD2 or aftermarket ECUs. It's fully configurable and it can also have GPS data input, so it can do predictive lap timing and data logging. So if we go to my screen, this is the basic setup which the ADU comes with. To start with, we're going to be changing the fuel level gauge. As it comes preset, it's in percentage, so not to 100% full. Now, when we use the EMU Black ECU, we have a fuel used calculation. So this is the easiest way, so you don't have to add any sensors. It's just calculated on the EMU Black. So to do this, we'll change the channel to fuel and then used fuel and in this case we'll say our fuel tank is only 50 litres and the unit is litres. So you can see that this changes live as you change features. So we can change the title to used. So as it is now, the log channel sent by the ECU will count up the amount of fuel used as you're out on track or driving on the road. And every time the car's turned off, it will reset back to zero. So it's fuel used in that particular time. So we can set uh, a red line for this. So it's basically a soft alarm. So when the value is above 45, so we know we've only got five liters remaining. Then we can simulate this channel to see what it looks like. So that's 46 litres and you can see the gauge is red, we put it back down to 40 and the gauge is yellow. Stop the simulation. We can also use a analog input from a fuel sender as a standard car would. And we can calibrate this. So as you can see here, it's on analog three. Most fuel senders, you need to wire in a pull-up resistor, normally about 100 ohms, but you need to measure the resistance of your fuel sender to be able to scale correctly to get the window into not to five volts. So usually it'll be a calibrated analog sensor so you can make it accurate. I'm gonna change this to volume and liters. And then obviously you need to get a calibration for your own fuel sender, which means usually emptying the tank, adding five liters at a time, measuring the, the voltage. Uh, you can do this through the ADU. So at the moment we've got five volts is 10 liters. So we'll change this roughly to 50 liters, 40 liters, 30 liters, 20. 10. So this would be our rough scaling. As you can see in this page, in the analog inputs, this is where you'll be able to see the raw values. Uh, the analog monitor will show you the voltage and that's how you can use that to scale your sensor. So with the fuel gauge done and the RPM already set up, I think we'll be looking to change the colors. So as you can see here, we're on to speed. We'll go to the background and change this to a nice blue color. So this is the other one behind the clock. We're going to change the color of the RPM gauge to match this as well. So if we go to the RPM bar graph, we change this to blue, just to keep your theme going. Now to make this text stand out a bit, I think we're going to change the speed, text color to white, and we can simulate the RPM and it looks nice in blue. Once we get round to 7,000, it changes to red, and obviously this will be combined with our shift lights. So now we've added a bit of color. We're gonna add our own logo. So to do this, we press Alt and A when we're clicked in the page editor, and we're gonna add an image. Now we click on this texture, add a custom texture, we're gonna add my logo, obviously. I need to change this to RGB and resize it because the percentage would be too high for the file. Normal error. And there we go. We've got a logo 
which we're gonna put in front of that RPM because we don't want the RPM. We can remove that, but I'm not gonna bother now. So next, we're gonna create a boost gauge in the middle here. So first, we wanna get rid of this gear channel. So the gear channel's paired into this, so they all move around together. So we're gonna click on the gear indicator, remove it, and then we're gonna use Alt-A again to add a gauge. First of all, we'll drag the gauge into here to about the center. And when you're moving things, you can either move by dragging and dropping, or you can use the coordinates here, which is very handy to be able to line things up together. So this is gonna be a boost gauge. So we're gonna use the boost channel from the EMU Black, and we're gonna set the maximum boost. This is in bar, and we're gonna set it to three bar with one decimal place. Now you can remove the units or remove the value, so you can make it just a, a dumb gauge or a smart gauge. We're gonna show boost as the title. I'm gonna change all these colors to our blue color, which we like. And the line as well. Okay, we can change the line width and the offset. So the offset is, it basically twists the whole gauge round a little bit too much. The line width is the actual line, so to do this we need to simulate. We simulate an ECU boost here, 1.2 bar. So now we change the line width to 5, so we get a much thicker line. Now we're going to change the text size and the unit size. And there we go, that's our boost gauge set up. It's quite simple once you get used to it, you can play around with colours. To go with our RPM gauge, we've obviously got shift lights built into the dash at the top here. These are controlled by the shift light channel. This is from the RPM channel from the EMU Black and the gear channel. You can set the start at different gears differently. So these are all set to six and a half thousand RPM and the maximum RPM the car can go is 8,000. So the shift lights will work parametrically and basically interplay in between. It's the easiest way to set it up and it's normally the best way. Now you can change the overall brightness of the shift lights depending on how bright they are. This does also change with the brightness here so the dash has auto brightness there's a sensor a light sensor just here this will scale the whole brightness of the dash and the shift lights and the warning lights on the sides so this is the table to change that if you need to change it so now we've set up our rough configuration for page one we can now look at the different pages we've got I think the diagnostic page here is quite important. So we just open a template, which I've made. So this shows the EMU Black diagnostic functions. Basically, if you've got a small problem with the car or you just wanna check it before you go out, you can look quickly through this page and make sure all your sensors are working and the car's basically running as it should. It's very important, it just makes it useful uh, without having to plug a laptop in or anything like this. So I think we've got too many pages for our application. So we're gonna delete some of these pages here. I'm just gonna leave these three pages accessible on our dash. To be able to change these pages, obviously we need a button. We've already wired a button in, in this theoretical case, and we've wired it into a digital one. We're gonna call it page know what the button's for and it's wired to ground so the switch is active low and we want to make it high when it's not active so we enable the pull up so that's now here on our project tree so now in the configuration window we can set up the buttons here and add our page button as a press we can always also use the same page button to cancel any errors so acknowledge errors and we'll hold the button to do that. So the, the same button has two different functions. So now that we can clear errors, we should probably set one up. So we're gonna set up an oil pressure warning. So to do this, we're going to call it alarm oil P, and it's an error. We use some custom text. And if you use the hash, it shows the current value channel, it's the standard uh, EMU black oil pressure channel from our CAN bus and we want it to come on with less than a bar of oil pressure. So currently as this is set up now the oil pressure alarm will come on under a bar so that's whether the engine's running or stopped the oil pressure alarm will come up which would be quite annoying. So 
we're gonna set a qualifier. So anytime the engine RPM is over 800 RPM, then our oil pressure error is active. We can then simulate this channel using the OLP active air alarm and we can show it. it comes right across the screen like that and then it goes off again once the conditions are met or the acknowledgement button is pressed so finally uh, the lights on the sides here which are configurable leds I normally use them for the indicator buttons because you can change the colors so we're going to show you a battery alarm so currently we have a function battery alarm set up here which lights up this in red but we also wanted to put a light on the side so to do this we have on off and f bat alarm and red so there's a selection of colors you can use blinking or solid so when the battery alarm is on no matter what page we're on this led will be red led six once we're done we should save the project and also make permanent to the ADU. This stores it to the ADU, so when the ignition's turned off, it's still on there. This rounds up the video. I'm gonna make this template downloadable, so the link will be in the description of this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe. If you want me to do another video on anything more specific, then please get in touch, either leave a comment or send an email, whatever you want. And thanks for your support.